Good morning. If you would join me in a spirit of prayer. Eternal Spirit, fountain of all life, our refuge, strength, and help in all trouble, enable us, we pray, to put our trust in you that we might find comfort. Open our hearts to your embracing grace that we might experience your peace. Fill our time with stories that recall the best of moments in Catherine's life, that we might find as many smiles as tears, as many laughs as sighs, and hope beyond measure. Amen. Good morning. My name is Brad Lorvik, and I'm one of the ministers on staff here at Highlands United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to a service of remembrance and celebration for the life of Catherine Schultz. Now, of course, I know she was known by many different names, everything from Kate and Auntie, and I knew her as Catherine, so that's the, the word I will be using. But please, hear your name for her as we engage in the stories and conversation this day. If you haven't been into our building before, I want to let you know the restrooms that are best available for you are halfway down the stairs behind the sanctuary. Uh, those will be the most accessible at the moment, uh, and the, they've been cleaned and prepared for the service today. Speaking of those things, I do appreciate your understanding that we have been limited to family in the room today. And uh, for those who will be watching in the days to come, we're glad you can connect with us this way. And we wish you were here. For those that are in the space, I do appreciate your willingness to wear masks and do know that there's hand sanitizer spread throughout the room. For those who will be watching, or if you have any friends or other family that would like to make sure to experience the service, if you visit highlandsumc.com slash funeral, you'll find the YouTube video there posted within an hour or two of the conclusion of the service today. On a side note, if you visit that web page before we get the, uh, the funeral put up, um, you'll find the highlights of the most recent, recent Rockies win filling the YouTube space right now. We thought that would be an appropriate thing to hold space. <sighs> With that said, I want to acknowledge the tension of the day. Right, there are things to smile about and stories to laugh about and memories that fill our hearts, and there is also sadness. And we sit in the space between these two things today. It's best to open our time with a bit of reflection on Catherine's story. She was born in La Junta, along with her sister, Wanda Jo. Now, these sisters were separated at a young age uh, due to their parents' divorce. Wanda lived with their father, and and Catherine lived with her mother. They did have some time together as children, and Catherine was quite the tomboy, tormenting her sister, destroying her tea parties, and this week I even got to hear a story of Catherine using her sister's doll head for a baseball. Though she may not have been the best of students when she was young, Catherine turned out to be a lifelong learner, always excited to see and know and experience. I also appreciated the stories of her first car, that Model T she would drive. They would, you know, they would skip the school and go to the lake, and there were times the road was so bumpy the battery would even fall out. Now, Catherine was in her 20s when she got polio, and of all things, it was during this time that she reconnected with her sister. Those times with her sister, as she reflected back, were some of the happiest times in her life. Catherine went on to serve in the United States Air Force, she received an honorable discharge, something she worked to make sure was noted in her record and meant a lot to her because her service was meaningful and it was honorable. After being a supply clerk in the Air Force, she went on to do all sorts of different supply chain import-export work. She was one of the first and only female managers at Weyerhaeuser. She was the first woman to do international travel for them when they needed someone to set up a new office with procedures and policies abroad, they sent her. She served as a VP at Viking Shipping. She was the president of the Ocean Park Washington Chamber of Commerce. She worked for FEMA. All of this during an era and in an industry where women were not always welcomed in such a strong and capable way as she brought into that room. She then went on to own her own small business as a seafood shop and then was able to move back to Colorado a move she understood as coming home. She found lots of ways to fill her time, many of them in the outdoors, because she appreciated the beauty of creation. She was known to fly fish, and you can see a few of the photos roll by that 
show the many fish she caught. She enjoyed golf. She also had an artistic streak. Her ability to see and create beauty through wood carving, pen and ink drawings. She even had a watercolor win a prize for a painting of a boot. Because beauty can be found in the simplest of places when you carry an appreciation like Catherine did. She even did the editing and graphics for a local cookbook. Wherever Catherine was, you could find a stack of books. She liked to read. The other thing you would find is her TV tuned to whatever Rockies game had just been on or was going to be on. She watched every game, and she grasped the nuance of the game and appreciated the statistics and the numbers that went into the magic of baseball. Another part of her life that carried great importance were her pets. The dogs and cats that didn't have a home until they met Catherine. I also got word this morning that her cat has found a new home, one that will make Catherine happy to know that there is such love being shared. Another thing about Catherine was she was always true to herself. She was candid. She was authentic. She found fun in life and was a storyteller. She also had so many great stories because there was not a challenge in life that she did not take up with her full self. She loved to laugh. She loved to tell stories and share memories. She could be found playing blackjack, or if it wasn't officially in a casino, you could still find her playing rummy for hours, and the family remembers that she was competitive even over a quarter. She took the role of being an aunt very seriously. And yes, I heard that shared from the family, but let me share with you clearly. There was not a single visit that I did not get updates on every single one of you. And not just, oh, here's what's going on. This was downright bragging. Let me tell you what amazing things they are doing and how proud of them I am. She loved to tell stories of your accomplishments because she saw great things in each and every one of you. Amidst all the different things she would do, she also found time for church. It was an important part of her life. At one point in time, she even worked at Burns United Methodist. She did work as a certified lay minister. In fact, at this very pulpit, the week before I became pastor here at Highlands United Methodist Church, she offered the sermon to remind people of what it is to receive a pastor and that what happens is bigger than any one person in a pulpit because God works through each and every one of us. Her words and her welcome warmed the pulpit for me, and I am grateful. She was always reflective and always hope-filled. Now, we had to move to digital worship all online, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, and we've been including video clips of different people. And there was a day I was at, the, uh, at Catherine's apartment to serve communion and asked if I might record her. And so she actually appeared in worship as one of our people sharing during joys and concerns during Pride Month, another part of our life as a congregation that meant a great deal to her. And I asked her, the same question I asked everyone, what, what's been hard? And where do you find hope? When I asked her what was hard, she responded that she missed her friends and she missed sharing meals with people. She said, now what was the second thing you wanted? And I said, well, I wanted to know where you find hope. And without pause, she responded, well, it's easy to find hope when you have a Bible or you pick up a good book or you call someone. This was very telling of the core of her being, her faith, her desire to know about the world and enjoy a good story, and her connection to family and friends. So heeding her advice of as long as you have a Bible, you have hope, we have woven scripture throughout the service today that it might bring you hope. So hear these words from Isaiah. I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you, and I said, you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And also from Isaiah, we find these words. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with the Lord's glory. And then I heard a voice saying, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? And I said, 
Here I am, Lord. Send me. I invite you to hear these words of the psalmist that have comforted God's people for centuries. I turn my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. For He will not let your foot be moved. He will keep watch over you when you're going out and you're coming in for this time and forevermore. For even though my flesh and my heart may fail, the Lord is my strength and my portion forever. From the Gospel of John, we hear these words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take you there myself, so that where I am, you may be also. We as people, we are relational beings. And those relationships are never more important than in times of sadness and loss. It's why we gather and watch together this moment of celebration and remembrance that we might recognize and hold together our relationship with a life well lived. This is especially hard in a moment where we're not all able to gather together at one time. And though we cannot gather around tables with coffee and snacks following this service in this space today, I invite you in the weeks and months to come as it is safe and you are comfortable to be together and share those stories around the table, for that is one of the greatest celebrations of life we're able to share as people. So we do our best to celebrate as we can in this unique time, knowing that others are watching from home, and that even though we might be at distance, we are bound together by something bigger than simple physical presence. For in this moment today, we are held together by the love of God that Catherine knew and claimed, the love of God that she now knows perfectly, just as we are held together by her memory. For she always held you in her heart and in her prayers. It didn't matter what day it was. It didn't matter where she was or where you were. We have always been held together by her love and thoughtfulness of us. Amidst a moment such as this, the most important hope I can claim, a hope I know to be true in the very core of my being, is that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not in life and not in death. And so we celebrate this day the love that Catherine lived in as you knew her and the love she continues to live in eternally there is a deep and foundational understanding in Christianity that each and every life is created in the image of the divine. Now this carries deep implications for how we care for one another. It also offers us wisdom on how we might celebrate someone's life. You see, by knowing Catherine, you knew the divine in a closer way. Her gifts and her graces, all the things she brought into the world just by being her, those brought you face to face with something bigger than Catherine. Because having been created in the image of the divine, in her life you could see something sacred. Now for all of us, that sacred spark is nestled within all of our imperfect humanity. And on days such as today, we look deeply at someone's life and we allow all the less than perfect moments to fall away that we might be left with the best of who someone was, their true gift to all of us. Now, there was not a visit to Catherine's apartment that I did not leave a better person than when I arrived. I either felt better or learned something or both. On my last visit, as we shared communion, she reflected on the challenges of life. We were talking about how hard things had been, and and she reflected, you know, one of the things I learned from being ill and not being able to get out so much is that you're in charge of your own attitude. I wake up and I say, I have a choice. I can be a pain or I can be smiley. Catherine not only offered wisdom, but she lived it. 
she recognized what it was to choose how she would engage this world, and she blessed us with it. All the while, choosing how she would engage the world, she was honest. And she was candid about how she was and who she was. She didn't care care about pretense. In fact, one of the greatest parts of her life journey was coming to know and share exactly who she was, having come to know that she was deeply loved by God, exactly for who she was. This depth of character allowed her to live and share love in a way that left an imprint on the world. You can love the world and love others so much better when you truly know the love God has for you. When I talked with family and friends throughout these last days, the the word that came up over and over and over again was love. There wasn't a conversation about Catherine and I have had that didn't include the word love. One of her friends, Marilyn Devlin, captured it well, and she sent me some words. She said, one word I associate greatly with Catherine is love. She loved her kitty and all animals. She loved bacon and eggs, hamburgers, oatmeal, almonds, Klondike bars. She loved lunch with friends. She loved reading and cross-stitching and baseball. She loved all these things. She, she loved bad jokes and good service, fresh coffee and fresh fish. She loved her church, her business, which she ran proudly. Most of all, she loved her family. She talked about all of you with the utmost pride, gratitude, and love. Every one of you. So much so that those of us who knew her think of you as our own family. We heard about you so much. So many wonderful words can be said about Catherine. But today we have the unique gift of hearing words from Catherine. When I'd been at the church, maybe even just a month or so, I received an envelope from her. Pastor Brad, to be read at my memorial, please. Thanks, Kay. In a short reflection that she wrote, entitled, This is As I See It, Catherine reminds us of our own invitation to be in charge of how we choose to live and how we choose to live into and appreciate the love that God gives us. Hear her words. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey. When God created man and woman, it was not only the physical body that was created, but the spiritual one as well. We as human beings spend millions of dollars a year on our physical bodies. We go to expensive health spas and gyms. We pay for expensive diets and costly cosmetics. We gladly pay the price for a smoother shave, for a softer skin, for slimmer bodies, and we give a king's ransom for a face that we hope will look at least 10 years younger than what we really are. There's nothing wrong in having a beautiful body or skin that you love to touch, but what a difference we could make if we took all that money and used it instead to develop our spiritual selves. Instead of spending millions on looking beautiful, we could be spending millions on being beautiful. Yes, we all are physical beings, and it's important that we acknowledge this humanness within ourselves, but it is not the only thing we are. We are unique in and of ourselves, having both human needs and spiritual needs. This human journey is just a single step in our spiritual journey, but just one of many that our spirit will be taking. What a great spiritual future we Christians have. We have the greatest teacher of all times. Jesus Christ guides us and loves us. He teaches us every day and walks with us through this journey and into the next. He never leaves us. and He lives in our hearts and our minds and our emotions. This then is the good news. We are not just here for this journey, but we are here taking a human step, helping us in our spiritual development. Remember this. God wastes nothing. Never has, never will. Our spirit will live forever, for nothing of God's is ever wasted, not now, not ever. Written February 7, 2006, Catherine Schultz, signed. Catherine, we give our thanks for your wisdom and for your trust and faith in the journey that you continue on. We're just a bit behind you. 
Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Steadfast and loving God, we gather today to celebrate and to grieve. We celebrate the life of Catherine Schultz, who we gratefully remember, remembering all of who she was to each of those gathered here. We recognize the love and spirit that she lived with and lived in. May each of us live such a life as we celebrate and recognize the memories, the stories, the relationships that made Catherine who she was, help us to find healing through that remembering. For this is a grieving community. For there is sadness and there is loss. Though we know and trust Catherine continues to live her eternal life in you, we're sad, O oh Lord, that we do not get to be a part of that life in the same way anymore. May you, O oh God, wrap us in that same enveloping love and peace, the love and peace Catherine now rests in eternally. Eternal God, we commend to you the spirit of Mary Catherine Schultz, knowing that it was never really ours to keep. Her spirit, her life, her love, these were gifts from you that we were blessed to know and enjoy. May we return these gifts by sharing that spirit in how we live our lives, that our living might be an act of thanks to Catherine and to you, O Lord. Help us to heal. Help us to find peace and comfort in you. We pray all these things in the name of the one who showed us how to live and who taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be. temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for your storytelling and sharing, be it on a phone call, at social distance, or within the bubble of people that are safe for you. These stories matter because they are Catherine's stories and because Catherine's stories have shaped our stories. 
And that is why her story carries forward. Because her story has impacted every day and story that you will live. I wish to send you with a blessing, and it comes in the form of a story. No story of a, of a young woman who went out on a walk and took with her one of her nieces. And they went on a walk and they saw the sights and towards the end of this walk together they sat down on a park bench to take part in what is easily one of humanity's oldest rituals. This wonderful woman and, and her, her niece, they, they sat to watch the sun set together. And you can always feel the earth turn as the sun makes its way to that rocky mountain horizon, and somehow it feels like it gets faster and faster because that last little sliver just suddenly disappears. And as it did so, that, that young girl looked up at her aunt and said, Well, Auntie, it's, it's gone, isn't it? And with deep faith and abiding hope, she looked at that young child and said, Oh, it's not gone. It's shining somewhere else right now. And it's with that kind of faith and hope that I send you forth from this place, knowing that Catherine is not gone, but shines somewhere else. May you be blessed and be a blessing in your remembering and in your living and in your loving. Amen.